Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Yesterday, I showed you how to open a folder for a specific customer. Today, I'm going to show you how to detect if a folder for that customer is already open so you don't keep opening, mul opening multiple copies of it. Today's question comes from Samantha in Riverside, California, one of my Platinum members. Samantha says, how can I check if a folder is already open in Microsoft Access before trying to open it again? I keep accidentally opening up multiple copies of the same folder and it's getting really messy. Is there a way to detect if it's open so I don't end up with a bunch of duplicate windows? Yes, of course there is. And a lot of people ask me like, how did I know to make this video for today? How did Samantha know that yesterday's video was opening the folder? Well, a lot of these questions come from my full course that's, you know, years and years old. So sometimes I'll get a bunch of questions that are similar and group them together like I'm doing with this one and tomorrow's one too. So there you go. In fact, I think this question was asked before the other one. And so I'm kind of putting them together in the order that I think they work best. So, all right, how do we do this? First up, as always, some prerequisites. Go watch yesterday's open folder video if you have not watched it already. Watch my video on for each loops. We're going to create a custom function that will return a true or false value if that folder is open already. So go make sure you watch this video so you understand how to create your own function. And go watch this video called app activate. This is the command we're actually going to use to open that window if it's already open. It's called app activate. I'm going to show you how to use it in just a minute. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch all of those and then come home back. All right, here we are in my My Database folder. Let me bring that back up here. There we go. Okay, now for this to work, you have to change a Windows setting that shows the full path up here. Let me move this down so you can see it. The full path to that folder in the Windows Explorer folder name on the taskbar. Okay, where is that? Well, come into File Explorer. Go to Options, go to View, and you have to have this right here. Display the full path in the title bar. This guy up here, all right, and it'll also show it down on your, your Windows taskbar on the bottom. This is necessary. Otherwise, if you don't have that, then that's just my database. It's just the name of whatever folder you're in. We need the full thing to be able to open this, because otherwise, if you got two folders called one, or two folders with any particular name, it won't know which one to open. So this makes sure that it's got the exact name there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use app activate. And if this guy exists, we're going to open it. Okay, but app activate will only activate the window if it's already open. It won't open it for you. So we're still going to have to open it with the other code from yesterday. But we need to somehow determine if it's open or not. So do we open another copy or do we just switch to the one that's open? Okay, so let's go back into our database from yesterday. And let's go to our customer form. Here's our open client folder button. Let's go to design view, right click build event, go back into here. All right, here's our code we wrote yesterday. Now, one minor modification we have to make is we have to get rid of that trailing backslash because this does not have it. And we have to match exactly what shows up in this, this title bar here. Let me see if I can get it back. Come here. There it is. See, there's no trailing backslash. So it's got to be exactly what shows up there. All right, I discovered this as I was poking around running through this beforehand. So just come in here and get rid of this. This should not affect opening the folder at all. It should still open it. It'll see it as a folder. All right, so what we're gonna do down here, we're gonna leave this code alone. We're still gonna determine what the file path is. If it doesn't exist, create it, okay? But then after that, down here, we're gonna say, hey, is it open? Is it already open? If it is, then we're gonna to have to app activate. If not, we're gonna shell it and open it up. But before we can do that, we need our function called is folder open. Now you can put that in here if you want to write in this customer F. Remember the customer F code, this is called a form module, right? And it only exists for this form. So if you want the entire database to be able to use it, come over here and find a global module. If you don't have one already, you can go to create and then module not class module, regular module. All right, but I already have one, so I'm gonna open up my global module. This is where all the functions that work everywhere in the database go. And right down here, I'm gonna put my is folder open function. 
Now, you guys don't want to sit here watching me type, so I'm just going to copy and paste it from my code vault. Here's the code vault, okay? I'm going to come down here and copy it. By the way, gold members get access to this. There's all kinds of stuff in this code vault. Lots of neat stuff. All right, we're going to come back up here, and I'm going to paste it in. And anytime you ever copy and paste some code from somebody else, first thing you should always do is debug compile it. Make sure it compiles. I don't know how many times I've wondered why something wasn't working and I, did, I didn't bother to compile it and they got maybe a variable spelled wrong or something's missing. So always compile it first. All right, so gold members, you can copy and paste that. Everybody else, get typing or screen OCR it or whatever you got to do. Okay, this is a public function. Public means the whole database can use it. Function means it's going to return a value to whoever called it. The value is going to be a Boolean. So this is going to return a true or false value. We're going to dim two objects, O and WND. Okay, we're going to set O equal to create an object, shell.application. It basically says it's going to create a, an object that represents a Windows File Explorer window. Ba basically, in a nutshell, that's not exactly right, but okay. That's good enough for right now. Okay, so now for each object in that shell windows collection, all of the open windows that are basically open on your Windows desktop, all right, each one is going to get assigned to WND one at a time. Okay, now if WND.name equals File Explorer, if the name of that window is File Explorer, then we're going to take a closer look at it. Now note, in some different versions of Windows, it could be Windows Explorer. I think, I see, I'm using Windows 11. I think Windows 10 is the same. I think if you go back to like XP or Windows 7, it might be Windows Explorer. So you have to change that. Okay. So now if we get into here and I see my, my tabbing wasn't perfect. Let me fix that. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. My, I'm very meticulous with my tabbing. Sometimes when I copy and paste stuff to my web, to, uh, onto the website there, it doesn't get it exactly. So we'll shift tab and then tab it back. Okay, that's much better. Everything, your indenting is important, folks. Access doesn't care about it, but I care about it. I don't know how many times I've missed an end if because I didn't tab in right. Okay, so if we get to this line, we're now, we now know that the window that we're looking at is a file explorer window. So now we're going to see if it's named what we're looking for. Okay, folder is the name we send into it. That's that big long name off the tab, right? It's going to be wnd.document.folder.self.path. Why? That's just what the people who made Windows did. That's what they call it, right? It's a window. It's document property, has a folder property, has a self, and then a path property. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't remember this stuff either, folks. I have to look in my notes too or Google it, so don't feel bad. I, you're not going to remember this. That's what the code vault is for. <laughs> okay. So if the name of that window, if it's title, right, in the title bar is the same as what we're looking for, that means that the window we're looking for is open and we can exit the function. Otherwise, if you go through all of the open windows, and if you want some fun, message box all of these and you'll see all the different windows that are open, right? If it gets to the end and doesn't find it, is folder open is false and it'll exit out and it'll return a false. Okay, so let's go back over here. What I did was I just clicked on this little button here, right? And then opened up. It took me back to the code window that was behind it, which is the customer F. Okay, so right here now, we can say if is folder open file path, that's the file path that we're looking for, then app activate file path. Otherwise, open a new one and that's it, right? Check to see if this file path is open already. If you see its title in the title bar of all of the Windows file explorers that are open, all right? If so, app activate it. If not, open a new one. All right, save it. Another debug compile, please, right? Debug compile once in a while. Let's come back out here, close it, open it, click the button. All right, there's folder one. Okay, I'm just going to slide it down over here now and click it again. Oh, look at that. It switched to it instead of opening up another one because it sees it as one of the open folders. See, let's go to somebody else. Let's go over here to, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see that this folder is still back here. All right, if I hit that. It just brings it forward. Now, if I go to a different client and hit that, it opened another folder. Because that's a different folder name, right? This guy 
is folder two. Come here, give me. There it is, see? All right, two different windows. Now, if I go back to folder one or client one, hit the button, it brings that one for forward. If I go to this guy and hit it, it brings that one forward. So you can use this technique to say, hey, is this application, is this specific folder open? If so, bring it forward. If not, open up a new one. See how cool that is? And there you go. That's not hard. See, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff, you know, this is folder open stuff, okay? This is stuff that you're gonna write once. I researched this. I had a client that I need to do this for, like I'm gonna say 15 years ago. And I figured out how to do it from books and I think Google at the time. And you're gonna write it once and you're not gonna have to write this again. This is not stuff that you remember. Certain things, yeah, you're gonna do it a lot, like DLOOKUP statements, SQL statements, uh, even like record sets, right? Certain things you're gonna do over and over and over again and it's just gonna become second nature. Stuff like this, no, not so much. Even I have to look this kind of stuff up. So that, that's okay. That's what I got the code vault for. And if you like learning this stuff, I got tons and tons of VB courses. A lot of them deal with working with files in Microsoft Access, right? File input output, reading and writing files, dealing with directories, folders, permissions, all that stuff. Even up to the advanced stuff, like working with the file system object. Lots and lots of lessons on this stuff. Of course, I'll put links to all of this down below. But that's going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.